Let's talk a little bit about fiction and what makes a good fiction book cover. First of all, fiction is about emotion. It's got to make a promise that will be satisfied in the reading of your book. So if you're writing a thriller, you want to you want them to feel suspense or fear just by looking at the book cover. If you're promising a romance, you want them to feel those inspirational, um, loving feelings. That's mostly done with color and also contrast. And so I'll, I'll show you a few examples of some things that, that work and kind of um, represent what makes a good fiction book cover. So this first one is just make it pop. A lot of people say make it pop or the wow factor or you know what makes it special. What they're talking about when, when you say pop, it's almost always contrast. So this one, there's a contrast between, there's a vignette, which is like a darkened edges, which makes the center kind of stand out. So this one's um, strong contrast between these dark points around the eye and then also the lighter points up here. But then also strong color contrast between the teal and the orange, which I'll mention a lot because teal and orange are really good colors that contrast. The only problem with this cover, I think, is the subtitle up here in white. They, they put a little bit of a drop shadow because they had to, and it still doesn't stand out very well. Um, it's pretty hard to read. It doesn't matter so much, but you see how much easier it is to read this author name and, and the smaller text down here, just because it stands out better. Lots of space. You don't want to cram everything together. So this is like one really good picture. Um, mostly blue and then a little splash of red to draw your eye in for color contrast. Lots of space between all of this and the text is nicely spaced out. And they did this really well too with the small text kind of going around the boy. Go simple. This doesn't work for all genres, but for some best-selling fiction, you can get away with something very simple. But at the same time, like this works because Twilight are basically paranormal romance vampire novels. And for any paranormal romance vampire novel, you would probably stick with red and black and you would have some sharp fonts like these. They chose to make the title fonts really small, which is unusual, um, and to fit them in instead of like putting, you know, a really big title. But on the other hand, like with this image, there really isn't anywhere good to put the title. They would have had to put like a box or spread it out or move this up. So they had to make it small enough to fit here. Um, but also because it's suspense, because it's paranormal romance, it's not a thriller. So they don't have to have, you know, really big, bold text. You can get something more subtle. Uh, more attractive that's going to bring in those those readers who aren't you know they're not looking for an action novel or a thriller they want something a little slower paced an illustration can work for children's books like under 12 maybe um, but it's hard to pull off I've done some you can hire an illustrator for anywhere between 500 to a thousand or more to illustrate the the kind of scene that you want, um, but it's hard to pull off well. And so they've got some special fonts, the titles. There's also, it's interesting to look at the Harry Potter books from different countries because they all use different illustrations and different features. And this isn't the, the original cover, like this isn't the cover that I have, but that's also illustrated. Um, you want to be careful with illustration for anything that's not like 12 and under. I wouldn't really recommend doing it just because it's it's a lot of work and it's unlikely to produce something as powerful as as photos and that's mostly just because you can't get the same kind of emotional response with with illustration as you can with pictures i might go on actually to some more samples you've got to make them feel something immediately you don't have to make them understand anything this isn't the place where you give them the reasons to buy your book, those come in the description. So this is just, you know, grab their attention, make them feel. The right fonts for paranormal romance, um, those readers are especially picky about really beautiful typogra typography and effects. But for others, just having a really simple, clean font will work. This one is kind of interesting because it's mostly, it's this one color pattern but 
they threw in this little shock of red here for contrast, which they don't do in the other books of this series, but they had to in this one because it's so monochromatic. And there's a lot of text, but they kind of fit it in well. And even, I mean, this is a strong cover, but it's mostly just, you know, one city scene and one model. But they threw in a lot of extra effects with the tattoos and the, the magic effects. This one's much simpler and cleaner. Um, it's really nice that they had this close up that you, you, you can make the eye stand out like this to, to really show that it's a paranormal or has supernatural elements. They've got her in nature. Um, for me, this font isn't great because it doesn't really represent the the genre. It doesn't really tell you that this is, you know, a werewolf book. On the other hand, you have Alpha Girl. So if if you know anything about ro um, werewolves, you're gonna know Alpha probably represents that this is a werewolf novel. And then Fallen. This whole series has amazing covers, but they're so simple. You know, one monochromatic scene with a, a really nice eerie forest and then you know a girl with a nice big dress typical of the genre very small author name all of these three have really small author name fonts um, I usually put mine I make mine bigger but again for this genre for this kind of um, more suspenseful genre where it's not bold and exciting and you know thrilling it's, it's okay to make text smaller and they've got the titles bigger. You have to decide too. You want to know, you want the whole thing to look good together and you want there to be an order for where you draw the eye. So you need to, you can't just throw all the information or you can't have the title and the author name and the subtitle and the picture all fighting for attention. You've got to have kind of layers of what's the boldest, what catches your attention first, what's next. Um, so they've got, you know, the really big title and then just kind of a way that draws your eye in and not too much. Normally I would put a tagline, something like this, or a review. Um, if the image is strong enough, again, like these reviews and this extra information, um, it's helpful if you're trying to convince readers to buy the book or giving readers, you know, the extra reasons, but you don't need that on the cover. If you just have a really beautiful book cover, then they're going to click on it and find out what it's about. And if they're, we'll talk more about series brandings, but like these covers, they all use the same font and the same little graphic and they're laid out the same. So you don't really need, you know, a tagline that says what the series title is because you can tell by looking at the cover which series it falls in because you, you've seen them before so you know how they all fit together.